Well, we are staying with inflation figures that just out. That's 28.92% uh, according to the NBS uh, disclosed by the uh, figures released just this afternoon. Now, according to analysts uh, that have been monitoring the situation, these figures are expected to provide insight into the current state of the Nigerian economy and, of course, prospect moving on. To discuss this, I'm being joined by Professor of Capital Markets and also the President of the Association of Capital Market Academics of Nigeria. Professor Ucho Waleke joins me live from our Abuja studios to start up the week. Prof, it's good to see you. The figures are out. 28.92%. I don't know. I think we've said, let me say Happy New Year again, because this is the first time you are joining the show this year. But let's take it up from the figures. What do you make of it? Thank you. Thank you so much, Tolu. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Uh, Tolu is quite uh, worrisome uh, in the sense that um, since, um, if you look at the trend, since January 2023, it's been on the um, upward trend. Um, and of course, the figure for December didn't come as a surprise, 28.92%, um, given that December is um, often associated with um, you know, increase um, in demand for goods and services, um, uh, you know, particularly food. Um, so you find that on a month-on-month -month, um, basis, we also recorded an increase by over um, um, at, at two, two, you know, 2%. Um, so it, it, it's, it's worrisome. Again, against the backdrop of the um, projection we have made for 2024 uh, budget, 21.4% um, for 2024, you, you, know, you begin to um, see that um, a, a very high figure of 28.92 um, uh, is uh, very far from what, you know, what, what we have projected for, 20, uh, for 2024. Now, if you look at what the MBS has released, um, um, the food components still appears to be where the pressure is. Um, food index has gone up to 33, uh, about 34 percent. And um, if you also disaggregate that figure, you tend to see that in states like Kogi, for example, uh, food index is as high as 40, 44 percent, uh, you know, close to 45 percent. Uh, that, that, that's for food. The core component um, has um, uh, been quite um, um, moderate um, at around the, you know 23 percent. Another interesting thing uh, in that report is that urban inflation is a lot higher than rural, rural inflation. Um, urban inflation at 31 percent, rural inflation at about uh, 27 percent. So you find that that gap may be explained by the transport challenges you know um, you know the country uh, you know is, is also facing. Um, and I mentioned Kogi earlier. Uh, Kogi is a transit state. Uh, people moving from the north to the south and the south to the north, you know, usually stop stop over in Kogi. So some say that could explain, you know, the demand um, pressure you find, um, you know, in the case of Kogi. Um, there, 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 there are also issues to do with, um, you know, the access um, um, roads in the rural areas. You know, transporting. Um, items, you know, from the rural communities to the urban areas, uh, the challenges um, faced there uh, um, is also possible. They have accounted for the uh, the difference between the rural inflation and the urban inflation. So, in a nutshell, it's it's, it's um, not um, is it's a worrisome development, uh, especially when you consider the you know the fact that very high inflation rates are inimical to economic growth. When you consider the fact that um, um, fixed income earners, in particular, are the worst hit in, in, when you have rising inflation, purchasing power is reduced, uh, wage earners, um, you know, are, are badly hit by inflation. There is also the investment angle; it, it also affects investment. Anybody who is invested in Nigeria today is also looking at um, the high rate of inflation. Um, so it has a way of also discouraging uh, inflation. Um, perhaps the only people that benefit during uh, this period are those that uh, borrow, which is also why it's also negatively affecting interest rates. Because if you know that um, inflation rate, um, um, if inflation expectation is high, the natural thing to do if you are lending would be to increase your rates to compensate for the high rate of inflation. So it also has a way of uh, driving up um, uh, interest rates. 
Um, there is also the exchange rate angle. You see, part of why we have this challenge with exchange rate today is also because of the fact that inflation rate is high. So because purchasing power of the Naira is weak, the natural thing for uh, you know, the rational um, uh, economic agents uh, tend to substitute the currency. And so that's why you also find dollarization. So the preference for, for dollar is partly explained by the fact that you also have a um, high rate of uh, domestic um, inflation. So, so these are some of the consequences of uh, right, you know, high rate of inflation, which is why I told you uh, from the onset that it's a, it's a worrisome development that needs to be tamed. Prof, for the man on the street who wants to put food on his table and he hears the inflation is 28.92%, he would like to understand what it means to the 1,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira he has in the bank. Let's break it down for that man on the street. 28.92, how, how worried are you? And what does it mean to the man on the street? Yes, it has implications for the man on the street. When we say 28.92% uh, inflation rates, um, MBS says that is year on year. Year on year means um, by the, the, compared to December of 2022, uh, if the, whether it is food, um, the uh, price of the food has um, increased by as much as 20, 28%. Of course, 28.92% um, uh, is the average inflation rate. Uh, remember, the MBS says whatever they are doing is based on a basket of goods, about uh, 740, you know, items in that basket of um, 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 uh, commodities. Um, so if inflation has gone up by 28%, it means that compared to December of 2022, that the price of, uh, let me take uh, an example, um, let's say a tuba of yam, all right? Remember I said 28.9 is the average, but I just want to give an example. Um, the, food, the food component is even as high as 33%. Okay, a tuba of yam, if it cost 100 Naira in uh, 2022, by 2020, December 2023, that same tuba of yam is now costing, um, you know, what, um, 133 Naira. If inflation rate for food is 33, 33%. But of course, if you go by this explanation, many, many will tell you that um, the MBS figure, you know, is highly understated. That's why people tend to doubt the M MBS figure. When you, you know, imagine that, um, say, a pack of Indomie you bought um, some months ago at, say, 100 Naira is today over 200 Naira. So you can't be talking about 28%. You can't be talking about 33%. You should be talking about something in the region of, um, um, if going by this example I just gave now, it's 100%. But of course, if you take it on the average, all right, um, uh, one should expect that, if you look at what's, what, what is a um, reality, inflation rate number should be, as, should be higher than you know, the numbers being churned out by the National Bureau of Statistics, which is why some of us have argued that the, it is time the National Bureau of Statistics you know, took a second look at the methodology, you know, the way they have been computing inflation rate, so that it can reflect reality. And it's only when it reflects reality that the government can, you know, uh, make use of um, you know, such data uh, meaningfully. It's also similar to the argument we make uh, with respect to the methodology for computing unemployment rate. All right? Remember recently, the MBS said unemployment rate was um, around 4.1%, 4, 4 and we thought that was ridiculous. Uh, okay? Some of us thought it was ridiculous. So for, it's important that the, the data that is being churned out by the M M MBS you know, reflects reality, and that's not the only way you know, uh, that data can be of use to the government um, in taking, um, uh, you know, decisions. Prof, let's now see what's been happening. For some time, we've not had the MPC meeting, though according to the CBA governor, they met the statutory numbers for 2023, and we're expecting when we would have the next one. There is no press release to that effect and when we'll have the next MPC meeting. But what do you think will be the front burner at that meeting that is expected to happen anytime soon because it seems like rate hikes are not raining on inflation. It seems to be working oh, in other yes, countries, yep. other climes, but it's not working for us yes. here, Prof. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're, you're right, Tolu. Um, it's not difficult to see why uh, rate hikes are not um, 
um, well, don't appear to be working, even though the central bank will argue that um, counterfactual evidence, you know, suggests that, um, you know, uh, it's been working, that without the rate hikes in the first instance, um, inflation rate wouldn't be where it is today. It would be, you know, much higher. That's the, uh, you know, angle from the, the, the central bank. Um, I expect the MPC to meet this month. Uh, remember, the MPC couldn't meet uh, um, twice um, in 2023, so I expect them to meet this month. And of course, the focus will be on inflation, uh, especially against the backdrop of the central bank's um, central bank governor's uh, declaration that going forward, the central bank will be targeting, um, you know, will be focusing on inflation targeting. All right. So the concern, uh, well, generally, would, would be, you know, um, inflation. And um, on that score, let me advise uh, that it's very important that the, uh, for the central bank to be able to deal with its own, to deal with inflation, at least uh, handle the aspects that concerns it, um, you know, with respect to inflation. When I say aspects that concern the central bank, I'm referring to the, the, the demand side, all right, the money supply side. The supply side is not, is not that of the central bank. I will come to that, you know, um, you know uh, uh, shortly. So it's important that the central bank independence is maintained, is respected. Why am I saying that? Of course, there has been recent clamor to restructure the bank. We read recently uh, calls uh, by, you know, calls from some quarters saying that the, um, the central bank governor shouldn't be the chairman of the board of the central bank. The two positions should be separated. Okay, in my view, that will work that will work against the, you know, the concept of central bank independence. Um, uh, it's important that not only the goal independence is maintained, but it's also important for, for the central bank, the instrument independence is respected, as well as the operational independence of the central bank. And this can only happen uh, if the uh, central bank government is also uh, the, the, the chairman of the board of the central bank. And a related development too, I wouldn't also like a situation in which politicians are interfering in uh, what the central bank is doing or reading political motives into central bank actions. A recent example is uh, the, the plan to move some departments of the central bank to Lagos. Okay, if you look at it critically, um, it, it, it's, it's simply meant to um, enhance the functions of the central bank. Okay, there is no reason, for example, you know, why um, the monitoring department of the central bank, or banking supervision department of the central bank should be in a Abuja, when the entities to be monitored, if you want to carry out on-site um, supervision, for example, uh, on-site surveillance, of course it will be, it's best done when the, you are there physically uh, in the premises of the entities. So if the entities are in Lagos, why have that kind of department in, um, you know, in, in Abuja? The same arguments I've also made with respect to uh, even other uh, financial regulatory um, uh, bodies like the Securities and Exchange Commission, for example, the monitoring department of SEC, you know, in my view, shouldn't be in Abuja. It should be in Lagos, where the, where the market is. The re registration department in, of SEC should be in, in Abuja, okay? Well, that's, that's, um, that's by the way. So the point I'm making is that the, we shouldn't read political motives into, you know, central bank's uh, actions. I think those are meant to enhance the effectiveness of the bank. Bank independence, you know, must be uh, respected if the bank must be in a position to address issues, um, uh, you know, with respect to monetary policy. Now, having said that, you know, I mentioned to you earlier that inflation challenge we have in Nigeria today is not just about um, monetary policy. There's also the fiscal side. Uh, um, over the years, we've seen cases of, um, you know, people have referred to it as fiscal dominance, all right? Um, Okay, again, partly caused by the central bank. The, the ways and means um, that, um, uh, that uh, over the years were, you know, um, appeared abused. The CBN Act, Section 38, you know, is very clear that you must not lend to the government more than 5% of um, previous year's uh, actual revenue. But of course, we know that that wasn't the case, um, uh, you know, um, in recent times. So that also contributed in, fu in fueling money supply, that also contributed in fueling uh, in, um, inflation. So there is the fiscal side, the pressure on the part of government on the central bank to lend money to the, uh, the government to finance de deficits. We should uh, control that, um, um, as well as the need 
for the government to also recognize that inflationary pressure, going by even what the National Bureau of Statistics has told us, is coming more on food. So in this connection, I'm happy that the federal government now is talking about um, uh, you know, um, boosting agriculture, you know, the supply side. Recently, we've had the government is talking about cultivating 500,000 hectares of land, and I'm happy your, your second segment should be discussing that. The government is also talking about, uh, the, the other day, the Minister, the minister for Agriculture, uh, Abaka Kiari, you know, was talking about uh, rolling out agri-mechanization plan, okay? Those are the kinds of things we should be talking about now. How do we boost uh, agri-output? So that is one. The, the issue of insecurity is also that of the, f the fiscal. It's not um, monetary, which is also why I'm happy that the government is currently mulling the idea of having special forces to tackle, um, um, you know, the, to read from what we have read, to read our forex of bandits, kidnappers, um, all right, and insurgents, because these are the challenges we have that are stopping farmers from going to farms, um, uh, you know, to produce food. So insecurity is an issue, and I'm happy the government is, um, um, you know, um, addressing that um, aspect. Then there is also the issue of exchange rates. Initially, I told you in, uh, inflation is um, uh, also causing the rising exchange rates we are, we are experiencing. You also have exchange rates impacting inflation. So um, both, you know, uh, Granga cows, if you like, um, uh, uh, causality runs from, from both sides, all right? So on the issue of exchange rates, what, what, what should we do? The attention of the government now appears to be on the supply side. Yes, we are, we are getting money from the African Bank, $2.25 billion. But if you notice, that, that hasn't really had a, a significant impact on the ex ex exchange rate. Okay, so it's not just about supply. Why we keep address the issue of supply more sustainably through, uh, you know, um, exporting and having, uh, if you like, multiple sources of um, um, forex. But there's also the demand side, and the government should be also begin to look at the demand side. And one of the ways by which we can address the demand side, I've always said, is to see how, whether we can have um, a buy Nigerian law, all right, that will compel, especially um, government agencies, to make sure they procure things here locally, all right, especially when those things um, involve, um, you know, tax, tax, taxpayers' funds. So the demand side should also be looked into uh, in terms if we must address the issue of um, uh, exchange rate because as long as exchange rate is high and as long as we continue to import uh, our import dependent economy, you, can expect, you should expect that inflation rate will be high. All right? I want to be optimistic um, and positive that with the takeoff of the Dangote refinery and the uh, work that is going on now in the other refineries, by the time these refineries come on, come on board, um, I want to believe that the impact on inflation, you know, will be uh, positive. It will help to moderate the inflation rate because part of why inf inflationary pressure is on is because of the high cost of, uh, you know, uh, petroleum products. There is also the electricity issue. So we also need to work on power. If you look at the 12 divisions published by the National Bureau of Statistics, the contributors, first, food and non-alcoholic -alco uh, products, okay, at 14.98%, about 50%. Second is uh, housing, electricity. Third is clothing, and fourth is transport. So we should use the MBS numbers, which is also why I talked about the, the need for these numbers to be credible. We should use the MB, MBS numbers in um, uh, you know, formulating both fiscal, monetary, and even trade policies you know, aimed at um, ensuring macroeconomic um, you know, stability. I must thank you so much. That's our time, Prof. I've been speaking to Professor of Capital Market and President of the Association of Capital Market Academics of Nigeria, Professor Uche Uwaleke. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you as usual. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Tolu. My pleasure.